Thanks for to all of you for coming to attend this festival here. It's really nice that you're assembling in this uh, pretty uh, dense town, so to speak, compared to where I came from. And to take your time to celebrate uh, Krishna Janamashtami. So, um, in Lord Ram's pastime, Lord Ram Chandra, when he appeared, he was very, very beautiful and very attractive. And as such, wherever he go, everyone wants him to be a part of their lives in different ways. Like the yogis were attracted to him, the, uh, the farmers were attracted to him, the friends, uh, devotees wants to be his friend, to play with him. So they were in so many different ways that they wanted Lord Ram to have a relationship with them. So Lord Ram told them that wherever he go, he had to repeat this over and over, hundreds and hundreds of times, that, that your desires will be fulfilled, but in my next avatar, my next incarnation, as Krishna. So anyway, uh, as Krishna describes in Bhagavad Gita, that whenever there is a decline in religious practice and a rise of irreligion, he manifests himself for the protection of the sadhus and the destruction of the demons. So at one point there was some dis disturbances on the earth planet and uh, it was getting very heavy at the, the unscrupulous and the demons, they were manifesting their potencies and creating a disturbance. So all the devotees, the demigods, they prayed to the Lord to manifest. <coughs> so, and actually these past times are described by some of our, our predecessor Charis, Sri uh, uh, Jiva Goswami, and also described by um, Sri Gargamuni, who wrote all of Krishna's pastimes. Also by Sri Sukadeva Goswami and Sri Prabhupada in many different ways. So what I'm going to do give you like is kind of a, a little bit of a mixture of all these different descriptions. So, so Krishna in the spiritual world, he told his eternal consort Radharani that you know what, I have to go away for some time, I have to go to uh, take care of some business, take care of these demons. So I'll be back. So Radharani, she said, well, I'm not going to stay here alone, that I want to come with you. So Krishna says, don't worry, it's not going to be very long, I'll be back. She said, no, no, not even a moment do, do, do I want to be separated from you. So she's, Krishna said, okay, then you can come. She said, but... I don't want to be separated from my beautiful arena, all my, my beautiful Govardhan Hill and my Yamuna and Braj and all the, the holy dams and holy places. So I want all those places to come with me. The Krishna said, uh oh. You know, generally, generally uh, ladies are like that, that whenever you go, then you have to have all your facilities. You know, so, like with Lord Ram, that's what he told Sita that don't come with me because the forest is very austere. So, Radharani said, well, that's the only way I'm going to go and I'm not staying here behind. You have to take me with you. So he said, all right. So, so due to Radharani's mercy that Krishna sent Govardhan Hill, sent Yamuna, sent all of Raj. So, because of Srimati Radharani that we became very fortunate to have all these holy places that we can manifest, that we can, we are able to, to see the Lord's pastimes and able to engage in devotional service. So anyway, uh, whenever Krishna comes, he would send all his associates, he would, he would send his, all his uh, ministers, just like when they, 
the president of the country would go somewhere, he would send his entire entourage, all his ministers, and set up everything so that he can come visit. So Krishna also did like that. So when uh, he sent all the, all the demigods, he sent all the devatas, he sent all, the, the, all his whoever is needed for him to perform his pastimes. So he also sent two vassals. One is a Drona, and the other is Dara. So Drona and Dara became Krishna's mother, uh, father and mother. Drona became a Nanda Maharaj, and Dara became Yashoda Mai, mother Yashoda. So when they were, then Nanda Maharaj, he appeared in the family of. Um, there were five brothers, and he was the youngest of the five brothers. So the Vedic system is that the, whenever the king would retire, generally the eldest son would take up the, the service. He would become the next heir. But in this case, the oldest brother, Upananda, when um, their father was going to enthrone him as king, of, of uh, Gokula, Upananda said um, the standard of leadership is determined by how much he is loved by everyone that he has to manage. And in this case, with, despite the fact that I am the, older, the oldest brother, but my youngest brother, Nanda, he is most loved by everyone, so therefore he should become the king. So in that way, Nanda Maharaj became king of Gokula. So, but despite the fact that, that he, he was king and he had so much opulence, he had one problem. That he and his wife, Maria Shoda, they were childless. They had no children. So they were praying and the brahmanas would perform all sort of a puja and activities so that they can have a son. And Nothing was happening. Generally, you, you perform some puja, and then you would get the results. But in this case, Nana Maharaj wasn't getting any results. So then, he had this dream that you cannot get results because, because these, these activity, what you're praying for, this child, cannot come by karma kanda, cannot come by, by, ritualistic, by ritualistic activities. It can only come by devotional service. But because this child, that you are going to get a child, but this would be no ordinary child. So, immediately after that, Mother Yashoda starts start seeing all sort of wonderful things happening, changes in the palace. Nana Maharaj also saw so much wonderful uh, vision and symptoms and signs. So, he saw this little very beautiful bluish personality residing in his heart and roaming around in his home. Then one evening he saw his personality transfer from his heart to Mother Yashoda's heart. And at that point, the very next morning, Mother Yashoda starts showing symptoms of pregnancy. So like that, Krishna transferred himself from the heart of Nanda Maharaj into the heart of Mother Yashoda. So, generally in the material world, when a child is born, he's born through the regular method of, of intercourse between male and female. But in this case, it was a heart transformation. Just like, like Krishna's uh, favorite um, bird, the peacock. It's described that the peacock does not, and the peahen doesn't conceive through intercourse. The way that the peacock conceives is that the the peahen, sorry, conceives that she would go and uh, be in the center, and the peacock would be circumambulating her. And at that point, the peacock would start crying. Tears would come from its eyes, and the peahen would go and drink those tears, and like that she would conceive. 
like that she would give the egg and the peacock is born. So that's the like, Krishna's favorite bird. So anyway, when Krishna when Marishada was give, showing all was giving all these wonderful signs and she start becoming very very blissful. Um, at that time on the other hand, Devaki and Vasudev they were they were also kings of uh, he was a, the prince of Mathura, um, Vasudev and Devaki was his wife, was his newly wedded wife. There that's a whole not a long story but I'll just make it short. So anyway, it was predicted by Narad Muni who he told to Devaki's brother Kamsa was they had a wedding when Vasudev and Devaki was getting married. Then it's the custom that the that the bride's brother would take his sister and his brother-in-law to his brother-in-law's home. So while Kamsa was doing that, this voice came from the sky that you were taking his sister, but you don't know that the eighth child of this sister would, would be the cause of your death, that he would kill you. So as we all know, Kamsa was very, very powerful and he was demoniac. So he wanted, immediately he wanted to kill Devaki. So long story short, Vasudev convinced him that I promise you that all the children I, that my wife would conceive of and give birth to, I would give to you. So anyway, um, what eventually happened is that Vasudev and Devaki, they were thrown in jail, they were in prison, so that they can keep their word that every child would be given to Kamsa, and Kamsa would be killing them mercilessly one after the other. So when the seventh child was conceived, Krishna called Yogamaya and said, uh, you have to do some work here, that I want you to transfer this child to the, ro the, the, the womb of Vasudev's second wife, Rohini, who was staying in the home of Nanda Maharaj. So like that, he, this child who was Balaram, was transported to the womb of Rohini, and thus um, Yogamaya came into the womb of Vasudev and Devaki. So then, so then uh, Krishna told um, Yogamaya that your work isn't over yet, you have to do some more work here, that I want you to to come to Mathura and bring me from the womb of Mother Yashoda to Mother Devaki and you stay with Mother Yashoda. So like that, Krishna transformed from the womb of Mother Yashoda to the womb of Mother Devaki and thus he appeared there. And as soon as he appeared, he appeared in his four-handed form, Vishnu form. and. Devaki and Vasudev, they were praying to him that if, if uh, Kamsa see this form, he, he, he would know exactly that this is the form that would kill him and he would want to kill you instead. So please transform yourself into a baby. So at that point, he transformed himself into little baby Krishna. So they were very pleased that they saw Krishna, the Supreme Court, is not their God, had appeared as their child. So. Then after that, he ordered again Yogamaya to, uh, to prepare a path from this prison cell in, of Mathura across the Yamuna and down to Gokula so that his father, Vasudev, can take him across and exchange him with Yogamaya who was on the bed of Mother Yashoda because what happened after child labor and for all the ladies know who are mothers <coughs> childbirth is very laborious so she was tired so she didn't know what child she gave birth to so at that time Vasudev went into the home and by Krishna's arrangement everyone was asleep including the guards that were guarding the, the jail cell in Mathura and he exchanged the babies so he brought Yogamaya from Mathura back to Gokula. 
from Gokula back to Mathura. So, like that, Krishna, he makes some complicated arrangements for his appearance. You know, just like the president, when, if, when anyone needs to go, if someone needs to go to Miami, they would just jump in a car and, or fly down there. But when a president goes, he has to make all kind of complicated arrangements. So like that, Krishna's arrangement was a little bit complicated, how he appeared in this world. So, so what happened, Rohini was there at the time when Krishna appeared. So the custom is that the man would not be around. You know, like today, whenever the wife is giving birth, the authorities in the hospital would demand that the husband or a close relative be there to witness the birth of the child. That is completely contrary to Vedic concept. So at that time, Nanda Maharaj, he was with the other cohort men attending to the cows. So Rohini came running with a bright smile on her face to, the, to where the Nanda Maharaj was, was attending to the cows. And when Nanda Maharaj saw her smiling, he knew that it was good news that his wife had, has finally given birth to a child. So then he got the news. So then he starts running, going to, the, to where Mother Yashoda was. And he was so much in ecstasy that he would run and he would faint and fall on the ground. Then he would get up and go again. And till to a point, because he was so much attracted to this child, because he, he was having memories of this child that he saw transfer from his heart to his wife's heart. And he was so much in ecstasy and love that he would, he would be fainting all the time. So till to the point for him to reach, the cohort men had to lift him up and drag him along. So they dragged him along to see the child. So when, when they went there and they saw this little baby, um, he was so very attractive. And then they decided to have Gargamani, the family priest, to come and read the astrological chart for this child. So when Gargamani came, Instead of reading the chart for the child, he started offering a, a whole bunch of complicated Vedic prayers, glorifying the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And everybody was wondering, what's, what's going on here? Then Gargamuni revealed to them that this child is as good as Narayan himself. That this is no ordinary child. So, shortly after that, he left. Uh, Gargamuni left. So then Krishna starts thinking, little baby Krishna, just born, he was thinking, he said, uh-oh, that Gargamuni has, you know, has created some problems here. He's describing me as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And therefore, everyone here, they would see me as God, and they won't be able to love, have love and affection for me. You know, just like if, if you, go to the, you go to the president, you know, you wouldn't go and, you know, deal with him like how you would deal with your wife and children or with your own father. Or if, if your father was a leader, a big leader, then others would see him with that respect. Oh, he's, he's such a big person, they have to show him respect and reverence. So, he said he doesn't, want, he doesn't want that to happen. Just like there are many incarnations of the Lord, and this one incarnation, Lord Nishingadev, he appeared and killed Kamsa, uh, Irani Kachipu. That's a whole other long story. But in essence, uh, his devotee Prahlad, who was the Hirana Kashifu's son, he went to sit on the lap of Lord Nashingadev after he killed the demon Hirana Kashifu. So Lord, Lord Nashingadev was smelling his head and was patting him and was saying, oh, how sweet it is to have a son, you know, and how nice that this child is feeling so happy on, the, on my lap. Just like, you know, like, like how the child here, they will run around and cry, but as soon as the parents come, and how they're going to feel so happy, so much comforted. So Lord Nishingadev said, you know what, from now on, I would never appear alone. I would always appear with mother and father and brothers and sisters, and I can feel that affection. So Krishna did like that. But then he said, you know what, with all I have mother and father here now, and so much nice surrounding everyone is, 
so very happy they're seeing me at seeing me at this as this beautiful child. But Garden Muni has offered all these fancy prayers, and now everyone is thinking that I am God. So what should I do? So then he said, Oh, I have an idea. He called Yoga Maya again. He said, Come here, Yoga Maya. Now you cover all of all of these all of these bridge vases. So none of them would know would know that I'm God. But they would just love me. So this is one thing with uh, with these elevated devotees of Braj. All of us, we are trying to worship Krishna as God. We are trying to learn how Krishna is God. But you are trying to learn how Krishna is not God. <laughs> so it's kind of a little contradictory. They are thinking, how can I understand Krishna as not God? Just like you have um, in the past time of Gilgamangala Thakur. He <clears throat> went to Vrindavan to search for Bhagavan, to search for God. So he went and he saw all these bridge bassies and he keeps asking them, where is Bhagavan, where is God? I heard God resides in Vrindavan. I said, God in Vrindavan? We don't know, we, we don't know of any Bhagavan living in Vrindavan. <laughs> then he said, um, well, he searched around, then he, thought, then he got an idea. He said, well, I'm searching for Krishna. Oh, so yes, oh, this beautiful boy, Krishna, everyone loves him here. So that's the mood of Braj, no one knows Krishna is God. But I just love this child. So, like that, Krishna used his yoga maya potency and cover all his, his very advanced devotees so that they can learn to love him and they won't see him as a lord. So, in that way and in that mood, Krishna appeared. And of course, there are many, many more pastimes of all his childhood that we can go on, but I'll put you back to Prabhu now. Thank you. Dharmaraj Prabhu spoke very nicely about these pastimes of Lord Krishna's appearance. And um, uh, I'm American.